Hello there, I'm Patrick from the Dungeon Web Academy and today you saw the title we are going to talk about authorization in Blazor, not authentication, it's about authorization. Maybe beginner stuff but still I think interesting for a lot of you guys out there. And with authorization, we mean that we're going to use .NET Identity in this Blazor project that we're going to build from scratch here. But then we also will add roles, meaning that we not only want to decide if a user is allowed to see a certain page based on the authentication state, meaning if a user entered uh, the proper credentials, like the username and the password, right? But also we want to decide if the user is allowed to see that depending on a certain role. So for that, we create a new project. And to make the things simple, we, of course, choose a Blazor web app. We call this Blazor authorization.net 8 maybe and then we already choose individual accounts because the great thing with that is that we get lots of stuff out of the box already regarding .NET identity so this is great but what we don't have is authorization included into this thing so let's see how this works and regarding interactivity doesn't really matter actually because either way when you even choose server WebAssembly, or auto the whole authentication authorization stuff with identity in this template is using blazor ssr meaning static server-side rendering you so you can even leave this at uh, none for the interactive render mode and you're already done with that create the project and when this is done, the very first thing that I tend to do is when I use this template here, I go to the app settings JSON and change the connection string here because I have the free SQL Server Express installed. Just Google for SQL Server Express, maybe download, install it. And then also maybe you want to install the SQL Server Management Studio, everything available for free, of course. Uh, we call this database Blazor Auth. Trust connection is true and trust server certificate is set to true. And with that, then when we run this, we are able to run migrations, meaning that we will build our database uh, from scratch with the help of entity framework and code first migrations there. Now I am waiting for my browser to there. There it is. All right. So here you see we have this auth required link here in the navigation bar, right? We can enter our credentials. Um, or we have to because this is actually the login screen. We saw the return URL, great stuff. Maybe you already know all that because I did this already in another video on my channel. I hope you like this and maybe you even subscribe, then you know that this video is there. Thank you very much. But now what I want to do is I actually want to start registering a user. We want to create a new account. So let's say Tony at uh, stark.com, for instance with the top secret password, we hit register. It's taking a while because we have no migration there yet. So you see login failed, applying existing migrations may resolve this issue. So we can just hit apply migrations and this is what this thing is actually doing. Either update database in the package manager console, right? So back to Visual Studio. Here then we could open the package manager console, run update database ourselves or we use the CLI with .NET EF database update. But for that, then you need the proper tools. Anyways, that's too much, I think, for this tutorial. Just to deploy migrations or again, if this is not working, sometimes it doesn't, then your best friend is here, update database in the uh, uh, in the package manager console. All right, and now we refresh and pay attention here. We are submitting a form with that. This is important because sometimes maybe you're wondering, well, okay, this was actually an error page, right? And when I now hit continue, this account has been created. Why is that? There was an error. I don't know why this now worked automatically, it seems. Well, what we did there was we actually submitted an old school HTML form, and this is why uh, page reload again actually reloads don't know if this is the proper word for that but it reloads a submission of this form I hope you get the idea if not write it down in the comments please all right so now we uh, have our account but the problem with I or not the problem one feature of identity is that you have to confirm your account let's go to the database first real quick so here I uh, refresh this thing we open our database there. This is from the Dotnet Web Academy, so ignore that, please. And uh, here, no tasks, of course. Jesus, tables. This is what I wanted. Here we see now all these tables. These are from identity. And here now you will see 
at the top 200 rows, we see that there is Tony Stark. Isn't that great? And you see also this column here, false. Email confirmed is set to false. So when I now would try to log in, wouldn't work because I did not confirm my email address, but maybe you read this here already. You can normally, you see that normally this would be email, but you can also click here to confirm your account. So we click here, thank you for confirming your email. That was nice. We execute the SQL again, and now we see email confirmed is set to true. Of course, you can change that manually in the database as well for this uh, developing uh, or development debugging scenario. Anyways, now we are able to log in. So now when I go to auth required, see that again, return URL is auth. Now I enter my email address, Tony at stark.com with the password. We hit log in and we are now authenticated. Great. This works just out of the box. Great stuff, right? Now, how's this done? Well, again, we are using identity here and you see the identity stuff all over the place here in this template. So one thing is this here, we register identity with this method. You see it adds and configures the identity system for the specified user type, this is important. Role services though are not added by default, but can be added with identity builder add roles. But first again, to clarify, of course, you can skip this if you watch the other videos about identity, but you see here in the data folder, we've got our application DB context. And this thing now uses the identity DB context. So this is, um, or this means that this uses a database context, right? Usually when you already know entity framework, maybe you see something like that, right? You're inheriting from DB context. But if you want to use .NET identity, which is free, by the way, it's not identity server. Please don't confuse this. .NET identity free forever and identity DB context means that we want to use .NET identity together with our entity framework database context. And with that, we get all the tables that you've just seen in the SQL Server Management Studio. And this again means that we also have to provide a user class. And here we've got the application user and this thing now inherits from identity user. Now, why is Microsoft doing it that way in this template? Well, you could also just do it like that and say, okay, I just want to use the identity user. I mean, we, uh, we already have the, um, actually you don't have to edit here. I think, let me, doing this rally. Yeah, I think this would work as well. But if you want to specify the user, then you have to do it like that. And again, why would you do that? Because maybe there it is. Uh, we see that we've got an ID, a username. We have some other stuff, normalized username, the email, normalized email, and so on. I think you get the idea, all that stuff that we can also see in here in the database uh, table, right? but maybe there's something missing, right? Like, I don't know, date of birth or an address. I don't know, something like that, a profile image, stuff like that. And for that, you just create your own user class, inherit from the identity user, and then here you can add your properties, whatever you want to add there. And when you're doing this uh, and you already ran the migrate or applied the migrations, of course, you first have to add another migration and apply this thing. But again, this is something for another video. If you want to see it again, please write it down in the comments or subscribe to my channel. Then you will be notified when you click the bell icon that there is a new video out there. All right. So great. This is authentication and in the program CS. Again, we also register identity with entity framework store. So we're using entity framework. We have the sign in manager and default token providers. And this also, okay, I have to tell you this as well, because this is brand new in .NET 8, that regarding our components, we now already have the uh, scaffolded, let's say, uh, pages available, meaning <clears throat> that we are able, and there it is, we are able to see the login page as a razor component, right? Before it was MVC stuff that was hidden. So we had to really bring this, uh, bring this up so then we can change it. But again, this was still MVC. Now pure blazer stuff. Great, really, really great. And here you can see this is the form that we've just seen for logging in. We have the register form, we have uh, forms to uh, change the password and so on. So beautiful stuff. But this is 
the foundation of identity and using authentication with identity. Now, if you wanna add roles to the mix, it's like that. And welcome uh, back to the video if you skipped to this place. So we register identity core, right? And now here, you actually already saw it. You have this function here, add roles. So add roles, it is. And we also, similar to the user class, have to specify a class here. See, there adds role related services for T role, so the role type, including I role store, validator, and role manager. Now we have one. Uh, role class available in identity and this is simply the identity let me move the mouse identity role this thing here and when we have this and edit the parenthesis we're actually done we can already use roles and when we now have a look at the database i told you it's pretty simple but you have to understand it i think to make uh, use of it and make and so everything makes sense in the end. So here now we have the ASP.NET roles table. And when we have a look here, there's nothing in there yet. And another important table is net ASP.NET user roles. And this is the joining table uh, for the ASP.NET, ASP.NET users and the ASP.NET roles, all right? Because here, as you can see, we've got an ID, a GUID in the end, and then we also have to set a GUID for the role. Now we can use services like a role manager that comes from identity to create the roles, set the roles, and so on. But in this tutorial, I really just uh, try to keep it simple so you get everything. Uh, we will add a role manually here in the database table also here at an entry so that we have the uh, connection and then we see in blazor how we can check if the user has a certain role and is able to well access a certain page so with that let's uh, move back to the auth page actually where is it pages and then auth and as you can see here now the attribute authorized is the one that we need and we can now here, and that's that's just one way, right? So to secure the whole page, you use the attribute authorize, and here now we can add roles. Simple as that. And now let's say this is only uh, accessible by admins. And if you want to add more roles here, you can also say admins and I don't know, an editor, something like that, right? And with that, you make sure that only users that have the roles admin or editor not both admin or editor can then access this page so now let's have a look here we restart the application there it is it is rebuilding and access denied nice you do not have access to this resource all right now where is this coming from let's have a quick look Just, i'm surprised by the red color this is nice and uh here it is, routes. All right, and as you can see here, we have this authorized route view component. Now, this is also built-in stuff when you use the identity template of the Blazor web app, meaning individual accounts, right? Usually, you would have the route view here, as you can see there, there's the uh, authorized view and the route view. And with that, you've already seen that when the user is not authorized, which actually means the user is not authenticated, then the U or this component will kick in redirect to login. And again, we have seen that already, we will be navigated to account login and then the return URL. Now the access denied stuff is something different because here in the pages, there it is. This page, some built in stuff, actually, and uh, when the user is not authorized in that case to access this page, then we will see this thing. Access denied, you do not have access to this resource. It's a great page. You can of course change it if you want and uh, I don't know, redirect the user again, whatever you wanna do here. Great stuff is that we are able to do this actually. Now let's change that. Meaning we give our user the role. Meaning we just copy this thing here. So I have a GUID for the, the role and let me change, is it able to change the, yeah, there it is, ABC for instance, and this is now admin, admin, and this is sufficient. And now here in ASP.NET user roles, again, the joining table, 
we copy our GUIDs like that, hit return, and now we have our role. So Tony now is an administrator. And we can not simply refresh the page because we have to log in again uh, because now the cookie doesn't know that uh, Tony actually has this role. So let's log in again. Tony at stark.com password. We hit login. Now we're here. And now let's go back to auth required. And now we are authenticated. This is great, right? But that's not all. We have the option to secure our page, this one with the authorized attribute. But how about certain parts of a page or just a component? And for that, again, we can use the authorized view here and similar stuff, we add the roles again. So here now I say only an admin uh, is able to see this. And uh, let me, you know what, let me just copy that, remove this. All right, and put this down here. You are an admin. Congrats, great stuff. All right, so now we refresh, restart the application. There it is, it's reloading. We are still an admin, so we should be able to see this. Yep, there it is, you are an admin. Congrats, isn't that nice? And now let's uh, just say that we are not in, or well, we just use another role like admin one, and that's it actually, refreshing or rebuilding, and you see, the message is gone. And this is in the end everything. I know a long video for not a lot of code actually, but I hope you learned with that how roles actually work in identity in .NET 8 and Blazor. So again, quick recap, we have the attribute with roles, we have the authorized view with roles, and it is uh, it is done actually here in the database with the user GUI and we have an ASP.NET roles user GUI and then we have the joining table here and of course in your program in, uh, CS where is it again there it is or in uh, when you're using a clean architecture for instance then maybe in for the specific layer for the specific project in that dependency injection file you also have to specify that you want to use roles here. All right, hope you learned something guys. If so, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Maybe you want to check out the Dunn Web Academy, link in the video description. And maybe if you want to know more about authentication and identity and Blazor and so on, check out the videos here on the screen. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I see you next time. Take care.